Before we go on, it's worth summarizing relationships among rectangular, spherical, and cylindrical coordinates. Uh, rectangular coordinates are x, y, z. We have typical volume increment delta x by delta y by delta z. There's no need to refer to the sample point in rectangular coordinates. It has no effect on the size of the volume increment. In cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, z, our typical volume increment is r, i, star, delta r, delta theta, delta z. Easily enough understood in terms of the polar coordinate area increment which has dimensions delta r by r sub i star delta theta. In spherical coordinates, our volume increment, as we've just seen, is rho sub i star squared times the sine of phi sub k times delta rho delta theta and times delta phi. The transformation from rectangular to cylindrical or from cylindrical to rectangular coordinates is fairly straightforward. If we know the rectangular coordinates x, y, z, then we know that r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Theta is the inverse tangent of y over x plus 180 degrees if x is less than zero. And our z coordinate is identical between the two systems. Since the z-coordinate is identical, we need only worry about the transformations uh, involved with r, theta, x, and y, and those are the same transformations we use in polar coordinates. So that uh, this transformation is relatively straightforward and should be pretty familiar, and our transformation in the opposite direction is even more straightforward. x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, um, ideas we should be extremely familiar with. And, of course, the z-coordinate is the same in both. The transformation from cylindrical to spherical or spherical to cylindrical is also uh, reasonably straightforward. And you recall the figure we saw uh, just recently that uh, we have the rho coordinate and the z-coordinate and the theta coordinate and we have down here in the xy plane the r coordinate, or in the r theta plane, which is simply related to rho. We have a right triangle from here to here to here and back. Right angle is right here. And this triangle can be brought out um, into this simple picture. We have the angle phi here. Remember, phi is the angle with the z-axis. Uh, this side is parallel to the z-axis, so this angle and this angle are alternate interior angles between parallel lines, so that phi is this angle, and the sides of the triangle are rho, z, and r. Rho being our spherical distance coordinate, r being our distance coordinate and polar coordinates, uh, our distance in the xy plane uh, in cylindrical coordinates, and z being our common z coordinate between common between cylindrical and rectangular. very clear from this triangle that rho equals the square root of r squared plus z squared. Theta is common between the cylindrical and spherical, so we have theta equals theta. And phi is just what? Well, if we look at this picture, phi is the angle whose cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse which would be z divided by rho. If we're working in terms of the r theta z coordinates, trying to transfer these, we don't know rho, but we know from consideration of this triangle that rho is the square root of r squared plus z squared, so that phi is the inverse cosine of z over rho, inverse cosine of the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, rho being r squared, square root of r squared plus z squared. So. 
given our cylindrical coordinates, r theta and z, we can write down our spherical coordinates. We can use the same triangle as a key to transferring spherical to cylindrical coordinates. Our transformation equations are as follows, and they're easily enough understood. R is just rho times the sine of phi. Uh, R being opposite the angle phi, rho being the hypotenuse. That's very straightforward. And z is rho times the cosine of phi. Those two come from the uh, a triangle very simply, and theta being the same, we have our transformation from spherical to cylindrical coordinates. Now, spherical and rectangular coordinates don't share any coordinate. Uh, any other pair, uh, the rectangular and cylindrical or the cylindrical and spherical systems, do each share one of the coordinates. Uh, that's not the case here. So to simplify the understanding, to, to, to more easily understand how the spherical go to the rectangular, let's just make note of the fact that we've just seen that r here is rho times the sine of phi. So that if we know the coordinates rho, theta, phi, then uh, this r coordinate that's not one of our rectangular coordinates, uh, it's our cylindrical coordinate, but it's equal to rho sine phi. And that helps us because we know from the picture of the cylindrical coordinates and from our hopefully long experience with polar coordinates that x is just r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So that x being r cosine theta, x is rho sine phi cosine theta. y is r sine theta, which is rho sine phi sine theta. And z, well, z we already know from the transformation from cylindrical to spherical is uh, sorry, from spherical to cylindrical is rho cosine phi, and that doesn't change. So we have our change from spherical to rectangular coordinates, and if we go from rectangular to spherical, uh, we just go in the opposite order. It's very easy to understand why rho is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Uh, this picture here, we have our x, our y, and our z coordinates, and if we apply the Pythagorean theorem, that's pretty clear. Uh, theta being the same as the theta coordinate, cylindrical coordinates is just the inverse tangent of y over x, to which we add 180 degrees if x is negative. And phi is the inverse cosine of z over the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Why is that? We come down to this picture. We say that phi is the inverse cosine of this divided by this. And we saw that also, of course, when we went from cylindrical to spherical. Um, so that the inverse cosine of this side divided by this side, well, this is rho, which is the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So that our phi spherical coordinates just the inverse cosine of z over this square root.